Okay, hopefully this is in focus good enough. Probably not. But uh, <clears throat> I got the key on, and it's reading the parameters, and I got a bug right there in the middle of it to where the numbers ain't quite lining up right, but ignore that for now. I know what I did wrong. I just have to get in there and reprogram it. Working from the uh, left side of the screen down, I got intake air temperature, 60 degrees. That's about right. Coolant temp sensor, 53 Map is uh, reading 28.35 inches of mercury, five, 5 degrees of advance right now even though the engine's not running, 0 RPM. Air to fuel ratio, I've calculated that based off the fuel system status and since the vehicle's not running, well, there's no fuel being injected so just, I leave that at 12. CTS is not supposed to read CTS, that's another bug, it's supposed to read CLV which is calculated load value. Miles per hour, which is converted from uh, kilometers per hour. VE, volumetric efficiency, which is based off of the mass airflow sensor versus the calculated mass airflow. So, I, you know, I, I could assume that's going to be a good uh, volumetric efficiency estimate there. TPS, 2%, and I'll go ahead and floor it right now just to show that it is actually working. Focus. There it is. And 87%, apparently I ain't got it floored all the way. Yeah, maybe that's it. You see it flashes from uh, green to yellow, letting me know that I'm pretty close to watt. Wide open throttle. Got uh, fuel system status, open loop. Uh, right below that, voltage, which is not right, it's not calibrated. 1.6 liter engine, which is a value that uh, I put into the system by using my little buttons down here, eventually. R is revs calculated. Uh, that's based off of every time it reads. It knows the RPM. It knows how long it's been since the last time it read, uh, read the RPM. So therefore, it knows how many times it's turned. Hopefully, uh, short-term and long-term trims for both banks one and two, which are obviously zero. <clears throat> Odometer in the upper right, which is calculated off the miles per hour versus, or actually kilometers per hour versus how many, how long it's been since the last time I read it. Miles per gallon primary, which is based off of the mass airflow sensor. And the average over the last 256 readings, I keep those in array and then average them out. Miles per gallon backup, which is all calculated mass airflow. And again, the average. And, wait a minute, yeah, that was MPGB is the calculated, uh, based off the mass airflow calculated. MPGC is miles per gallon calculated, which is based off of the fuel used divided by the distance traveled. So it's probably going to be the most accurate overall, over time anyways. Oh, this is in the right column by the way. And then I got the mass, mass airflow primary which is based directly off the sensor itself. <clears throat> and then the mass airflow calculator which is based off of the engine size, RPM, intake air manifold, or intake air temperature, and a bunch of other good variables. Uh, below that, there's gallons per hour, which is based off of mass airflow. Whether the, if the mass airflow sensor is present, then I use that. If not, I use the calculated mass airflow versus any volumetric efficiency numbers I might have punched in. Uh, fuel used, F slash <laughs> U. Uh, yeah, obviously fuel used. Uh, dollars per minute is how much gas I'm burning in dollars per minute, obviously. Below that is a number that I put in there for dollars per gallon, right now about 390. MR is miles remaining based on the F value below, which is fuel in the tank. And below that is weight, which 2640 is obviously wrong for this vehicle, but it's just a number that I put in there for, I got a section in here that's not quite done yet. It's a quarter mile timer and a zero to 60 timer. Seems to work, but there's still a few bugs in it. Right about here is nothing more than a timer. It's 0 hours, 4 minutes, 39 seconds. Uh, right there is the last button that I pushed. Here is a counter, either an error counter or a time through the loop counter. Right now it's 58 times through the loop. And 0 errors. That's OBD errors. And then 01 is the menu that I'm in. AL is reading all variables and 504, 506, that's 5 minutes, 4 seconds, 506 thousandths of a second, 539 thousandths of a second. 
that's how long it's been since the uh, system's been on. I read this thing all the way down into the nanoseconds, uh, nano inches for the odometer. Is you know all that stuff adds up, and I've got the memory and uh, programming capability to do it. Right here, I've got the OBD word BE3FB810, which is uh, the PIDs that it's putting out for zero through twenty. And anybody that knows OBD will know what that means. And here in a second should pop up here any second it'll tell me the protocol that the car is talking there you go 9141 slow so yeah this uh, Nissan talks pretty slow if I plug this into a can this this little white blob that's going by is showing what's all being updated and if I was hooked up to a can vehicle okay there it just failed on OBD so it does that once in a while PIDs fail down here and this error counter should go up to one next time through. Okay, 74 times through the loop and let's have okay, one error right there. Now I forget where it was. That yeah, doesn't matter. Anyways, that's basic operation of the system. I've also got uh, right up here, if there's any if the check engine lights illuminated, it'll say mill right there, and then the actual uh DTC, the diagnostic trouble code, will show up down here, uh, on and off. If, well, you saw when the PID failed, it showed PID fail down here. If I hit one of my menu select buttons here, we'll scroll through the menus, and hopefully I can do this quick enough, because I get a pretty quick timeout on this, because it's just me operating, it doesn't have to be anybody else. I can select my TAC output mode, change the fuel, go put it to sleep, check my log graph, view the log, clear the log, turn the log on and off, set the revs back to zero, speed read one PID, read the O2, uh, yeah, read the, <clears throat> read the O2 sensors alone, clear everything, set it to automatic or manual, set to the volumetric efficiency to a quarter mile timer, zero sixty timer, read the snapshot data, clear any DTCs, this is hard to focus on. Now I gotta get back to where I was. And you can probably hear the beep. Just a little audio, audible indication of what's going on. Come on, where are you? Get the VIN, fast slow, on the fast slow mode it either reads a it either reads everything in the slow mode or it reads only what it needs to read to get all these values updated. Okay, now it's back up again and as you can see it bugged on me a little bit, but that's alright. Change the VE, change the engine size, change the fuel cost, clear the miles per gallon primary, clear the miles per gallon backup, set the fuel used to zero, set the odometer to zero, adjust the voltage, set the weight and now we're back to where we were. I even threw in a little deal here to adjust the brightness of the screen. You know, it's getting like crazy bright. There's a little brightness indicator down there. I got it set up so it doesn't go too dark or too bright. You know, I don't want to burn out the LCD or anything. It was like $20 LCD from SparkFun. Actually, I don't even think it messes with the brightness. I think it just messes with the contrast. 